A little while ago, I made a video on creating a seamless infinite scroll effect and after posting it, some people reached out asking how to achieve this same effect but with horizontal scrolling instead. I had this on my to-do list for a while and just recently, while browsing through the awards nominees, I came across this website with a stunning infinite scroll animation. That's when I knew it was finally time to make this video. So here it is. In today's video, I'll show you how to create this smooth, seamless horizontal scroll effect using just JavaScript without GSAP and scroll trigger. There might be different ways to achieve this effect, but the approach I'm using here dynamically duplicates sections on both ends, ensuring a continuous loop with no visible breaks. I've also captured both mouse wheel and touch gestures, making sure it works flawlessly on mobile devices too, just by swiping through. And to make it even more interactive, you can see I've also added a progress bar at the top that resets every time the loop restarts along with the counter. Everything is built using just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Creating content like this takes a lot of time, especially producing two videos a week. So if you find this helpful, a like on the video would really mean a lot. It helps more people discover my content and supports the channel's growth. If you want to access the source code, you can check out the pro membership through the link in the description. All right, let's dive into the code. We need three main sections, a progress bar, a progress counter, and a scroller that will hold all our sections. The progress bar will remain empty for now since we'll style it purely with CSS. Inside the progress counter, I'll add an h1 with an initial value of 0 which will dynamically update using JavaScript later. Now inside the scroller, I'll add a few sections with some placeholder content. The content itself doesn't really matter since our focus is entirely on creating the infinite scrolling effect. For this example, I've added 8 sections, each containing some basic text and images, just in case you want to follow along with the same setup. And that's all we need for the HTML. Now let's move on to styling. First, I'll apply some global resets. I'm setting margin and padding to 0 and using box sizing border box. For the headings, I've chosen a custom font. The H1 is oversized, set to 15 viewport width, so it scales dynamically with the viewport width. It's also in uppercase and a small top padding to balance spacing. The H2 is smaller with a size of 30 pixels, while paragraph elements have a medium font weight and a size of 15 pixels. For images, I am making sure they always fill their container by setting width and height to 100% with object fit cover to prevent stretching while keeping the aspect ratio intact. Now for the container, I have set it to position fixed so it stays in place all times. It spans the entire viewport width and height using 100 viewport width and 100 viewport height while hiding any overflow to prevent unwanted scrolling outside our scroller. The progress bar is positioned at the very top and takes up the full width of the screen. Its height is 10 pixels and it starts at 0% of scale. As we scroll, we'll animate this transform value to visually represent progress. I've also added transform origin center left to make sure the bar grows from left to right. Since this element is constantly updating, I'm setting will change transform to optimize animation. The progress counter is positioned in the bottom right corner. It has a white color and a z-index of 2 keeping it above everything else. Now let's talk about the scroller, which is where all the magic happens. This element is relative and set to a massive width of 700 viewport width for now. Later in JavaScript, we'll dynamically recalculate and adjust this width based on the number of sections. So if you want to add more sections, they'll be included in the infinite loop automatically. The scroller is displayed as a flex container, allowing all sections to sit in a row side by side. Initially, it's set to translate x0, but this will change as we apply smooth horizontal scrolling. Each section is set to 100% of the viewport height, keeping everything full screen by default. To align content perfectly, I'm using Flexbox, Justify Content Center, and Align Item Center making sure everything stays centered inside each section. Now just to save some time, I'll paste in some additional basic styles for layout and positioning. But again, the content inside the sections isn't important. Our main focus is making the infinite scroll work. So feel free to customize the styles however you like. That's all for the CSS, let's move on to the main logic. 
The first thing we need to do is to wait for the DOM to load using DOM content loaded event. This ensures that the script only runs after all the HTML has been fully loaded. Next, we select all the key elements we'll be working with. We grab the container and the scroller. We also select the progress counter and the progress bar, which will animate at the top, visually representing the scroll progress. To work with sections dynamically, we convert all section elements inside the scroller into an array using query selector all. This will allow us to loop through them later when we set the infinite scrolling effect. Now let's define some important variables and constants that will control our scrolling behavior. We set a smooth factor of 0.05, which determines how smoothly the scrolling motion interpolates between positions. Next, we define touch sensitivity set to 2.5. This controls how fast touch gestures translate into movement, making sure the experience feels responsive on mobile devices. We also define buffer size which is set to 2. This is used later when we create clones of sections on both ends to maintain an infinite loop effect. We start with target scroll X which represents where we want the scroller to move and current scroll X which tracks its actual position. These two values will be interpolated using the love function which I'll explain in a moment. Then we have a flag that tells us whether an animation is currently running, preventing unnecessary re-renders. For tracking progress, we define current progress scale and target progress scale which control the progress bar's width as it grows and resets dynamically. We also track last percentage which helps us determine when the progress bar should loop back to zero when transitioning between cycles. We declare a flag that checks if the user is actively touching the screen. Last touch X stores the last touch position which helps us calculate movement direction. Touch velocity will be used to apply a momentum effect after a user swipes, creating a smooth deacceleration rather than stopping abruptly. And finally, last touch time stores timestamps for the touch events, allowing us to measure speed and velocity when a swipe happens. Before we move on to handling user interactions, we need a function to smoothly interpolate between two values over time. This is where we use lerp. This function takes a starting value, an ending value and a factor that determines how quickly we move between them. Alright, now that our variables and smoothing function are in place, let's move on to setting up the scrolling mechanism itself. To achieve a seamless loop, we need to dynamically clone sections at both ends. This will ensure that, no matter how far the user scrolls, there is always content before and after the original sections, maintaining the illusion of an endless scroll. The first thing we need to do inside this function is remove any previously created clones. Since we are generating duplicates dynamically, we don't want them to pile up every time this function runs. So before doing anything else, we clear out any old clone sections. Next, we select all the original sections inside the scroller while making sure to exclude any previously cloned ones. This is important because we only want to work with the actual sections that were added in the HTML, not the duplicates that we generate later. Now, before we start cloning, we need to calculate the total width of all sections combined. To do this, we loop through each section and get its computed width. We then add up these values to get the total width of our scroller's content. This value is important because we'll need it later when adjusting the scroller's size. With that in place, we now start cloning sections on both ends to create a smooth transition. We begin by duplicating sections on the left side of the scroller. These sections are exact copies of the original ones but we give them a special class and a unique identifier so we can distinguish them later. These cloned sections are then inserted before the original ones extending the scroll area on the left. Then to make sure there is always at least one set of content inside the scroller, we check if the original scroller was empty. If it was, we add one complete set of sections so that something is always visible when the page loads. Next, we repeat the same process but for the right side adding additional cloned sections after the original content. This ensures that as we scroll to the right, we never reach an empty space. Now that we have extra sections on both sides, we need to adjust the total width of the scroller to make room for them. Since we have added multiple new sections, we need to expand the scroller's width so that everything fits seamlessly. Finally, to make sure the user starts from the correct position, we shift the entire scroller to the middle so that they begin scrolling from the original content rather than the cloned ones. This makes it feel like the page loads in a natural state while still maintaining the infinite effect. And that's it. This function ensures that no matter how far the user scrolls, there is always content available in both directions, creating an illusion of infinite loop. 
Now that we have our scroller set up, the next step is to detect when the user reaches the boundaries and reset their position dynamically so the scroll never actually stops. This is handled by the boundary check function which continuously monitors the scroll position. It works by checking if the user has scrolled too far to the right or too far to the left. If this scroll position exceeds the right boundary, meaning the user has moved beyond the last visible section, we instantly shift everything backward by the total width of all sections combined. This places them right back into the correct loop position without them noticing. Similarly, if the user scrolls too far to the left boundary, meaning they have moved into cloned sections before the original content, we do the opposite, we shift the entire scroll position forward, instantly placing them back at the correct point in the loop. This logic ensures that even though the scroll technically has an endpoint, the user never sees a break. It seamlessly continues in both directions. Now that we have the loop logic working, we also need to update the progress bar at the top and display the current scroll percentage in real time. To do this, we first calculate the base position, which represents the center of the infinite loop where the original sections start. Then we determine the current scroll position relative to this base point and convert it into a percentage value. If the percentage goes below zero, meaning we have wrapped around to the previous cycle, we adjust it back to keep everything in a clean range. But since this scroll is technically infinite, we need to detect when a wrap around happens. For example, if the percentage was near 100 and suddenly drops to zero, we know a loop reset occurred. Likewise, if it was at 0% and suddenly jumps to a high value, it means the user scrolled the other way. In both cases, we ensure that the progress bar resets smoothly without a sudden jump. The last major piece of logic we need is the animation function that makes everything scroll smoothly. Rather than updating the scroll position instantly, we use linear interpolation, also called lerping, to gradually move toward the target position. This creates a smooth motion effect instead of abrupt jumps. Each frame, we update the scroll's transform position, moving it slightly closer to the target. At the same time, we update the progress bar's width, making sure it scales dynamically as the user scrolls. If the target position and the current position are very close, we stop the animation since no more movement is needed. Otherwise, we keep calling the function on every frame until the target position is reached. Now let's move on to handling user interactions so the scrolling responds properly to both mouse wheel events and touch gestures. The first thing we do is call the setup function to calculate the correct scroll width, ensuring that all the sections and clones are properly positioned. Right after that, we update the progress bar so it correctly represents the initial scroll state. Since we are starting in the middle of the loop, this ensures that the progress counter and bar are already aligned before any user interaction happens. To enable scrolling with the mouse wheel, we'll listen for the wheel event on the container. Every time the user scrolls up or down, we adjust the scroll position based on the wheel movement. But since our scroll is technically infinite, we need to check if the user has reached the boundary and reset their position accordingly. To prevent unnecessary re-rendering, we also make sure that the animations don't run continuously. If no animation is in progress, we trigger a new one using a request animation frame which smoothly updates the scroll position in real time. Now, to make this work seamlessly on mobile devices, we need to handle touch gestures as well. To save some time, I'll paste in some code and briefly explain how it works. First, we detect when a touch starts, storing the initial touch position and timestamp so we can measure movement. As user moves their fingers, we calculate the touch difference, determine the swipe direction and update the scroll position accordingly. We also track the swipe speed which helps us apply a momentum effect. When the user lifts their finger, we check if they swiped fast enough to keep moving. If they did, we allow the scroller to continue moving even after they stop touching the screen. This makes the scrolling feel more natural, similar to how native mobile apps handle momentum scrolling. And with that, we now have a fully functional infinite horizontal scroll that seamlessly responds to both mouse wheel input and touch gestures. Let's take a final look at how the scroll performs in action. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.